Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about TensorFlow and doing inference in Java. So during this week I had a little project where I trained a network in TensorFlow with a lot of images and then I wanted to do inference in Java. And I had another with video about this earlier where I showed how to do this and you can find that link up in the uh, right hand side of this video. And this little video said that you had one input and an output in order to do inference with a model. And in this project that I had, I wanted to do the same thing. So I updated the code and tried to make a Keras model that I could train on. The problem that I ended up having was that the new Keras model is much easier to write and encapsulates a lot of things to make it easier. And in some cases harder as well. Because when we come to this model, as you see here, earlier in my example, I had some uh, placeholder in the beginning where my inputs were. And then I had a placeholder in the outputs where I could set a name for the output. And as you see here, I have actually set a name for the output down here. And earlier I had a name for the input as well. And that is where my problem started because I thought that if I just set an input and output, I just use those name, I could give this model the data it required and get the result back. And during this week, I had a lot of other work as well. So this was a little bit of a side project. So I didn't spend that much time on it, but it always nagged me that this didn't work. They weren't the names that were required in order to progress. And I couldn't really figure out what names I should use in order to work with this project. Another thing that I had problem with was that giving this a correct input shape. Uh, first off, I thought that I might give it just a full byte array and then have a very um, linear, lin linear uh, liner, <laughs> one line <laughs> uh, kind of uh, input. But uh, that ended up being very hard. So it's actually easier to give it the correct input shape and then specify that in Java as well. So we see here that we have our little model. We had some convolution, more convolution, convolutions. I, we have five layers of convolutions here. And then we have some flatten and some dense layer and some output. So this is what I ran through a lot of iterations and created a model. Then I tried to use this in order to figure out what the actual model should be. I opened it up in TensorBoard and I could see all the layers here and I actually got this main output as the name I should use. And also when I had the main input, I got that as a name of the different layers. But that didn't work in my Java project. And that was really strange. I wrote this little script here that could plot a model. So if we uh, run this uh, little script here, uh, plot model, it should create a little model uh, JPEG here. So let's get into that uh, data set TensorFlow and model PNG. So here we have the actual P the actual model as well. And if we go in here uh, a little deeper, so we look at the start, we have this COM2 in input. And at the end, we have my main output layer. So I thought that, okay, these are the names, I can use this in order to train my network. Um, but those names didn't work. <laughs> and, and I saw the same thing in uh, my output in uh, 
TensorBoard. I also looked in here with this uh, summary output. You get the same names here and, and nothing made sense. I couldn't really use this model because I didn't find the actual names of what this model had. So I, after Googling a lot and working through this, I finally found the tool that I was able to get these names. And it actually is shipped with TensorFlow and it's mentioned on one page in one place. And I actually found it after a while. So this is called the saved model CLI. So if you have this little program, you can see here that you can run show, run, scan and convert. So you can actually use this little tooling to work with your saved model and create other things with it. You can run an inference in it, but you can show information. So let's say that we want to do show. If we run that, we will get the information that we can add a directory. So I will add my model here as my directory. And when I run that, I see that I have a tag set here called serve. So I can actually add that as an input as well. Tag set serve. And if I do that, it tells me that I have signature definitions of save model int op and serving default. So if I add the signature uh, def, and you can actually find all of these if you do help on this command, you can actually see what kind of inputs you can do. So we do the serving, uh, serving default here. So I actually ended up making it smaller. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and now when we run that, what do we get out? We get our inputs, comv input and main output. So these names, we recognize from our earlier, but they are the um, names of the array input and arrays of output. Then later down here, you see that you have a name. And this is the thing. So serving default com d2 input uh, zero, that's the name of the input and this stateful partition call is the name of the output. So if we go to my Java class here, you see that here I had some tensor that I put in um, and that I have changed this code after this. So actually what you feed in here, if you want to feed in your, uh, your data, you feed in the input tensor and this name here should be the serving default comd input and the output tensor down here where you fetch your data. Well, that's this stateful partition call zero. So those are the actual names that are required for you in order to do run inference. Um, so this was what I wanted to show and talk about today. Uh, this was something that I really struggled with and it was hard to find this information. Um, so I wanted to give you this information and hopefully you don't have to struggle with this if you are required to create a model and then have the actual names for inference. As it stands today, the Java package is 1.15. So that's the latest version in Maven for Java today. Uh, TensorFlow has actually released 2.1. So it has gone to a different uh, versioning system, a different major version. And a lot have been easier. They have added um, a more functional way to write your models and uh, it's interesting and it's also uh, very good if you want to debug your model and actually do some more uh, advanced things with your model so they have actually added a lot to this new 2.1 but it's fully 
uh, compatible with the older one. So I actually run 2.1 and do my training, create my model and run everything that is required here on my GPU. So it's quite fast. And then I can do inference with 1.15 with those libraries uh, in my application. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. If you have any questions about models or how to use uh, Java for inference, then just leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you um, want to see more like this, if you like tutorials, if you like uh, small interesting new libraries that I might find or other good information that can help you in your day-to-day -day programming life, then please subscribe to this channel and I really hope to see you in the next video.